In this example, we want to use the given graph to answer the following questions. For number one, we're letting h of x be f of x times g of x, and we are interested in finding h prime of negative 5. In other words, we want to find the derivative of h at negative 5. So the first thing we need to notice is how h is defined here. And h is defined as a product. So in order to find the derivative of h, we're going to need to use our product rule. So let's start by just writing out our product rule. If we're finding the derivative of h of x, and it's the product of f times g, we know we have to take the first function, f, and multiply it by the derivative of g, and then add that to the second function, g, multiplied by the derivative of the first function, and that would be f prime. So there's our product rule. And now we want to evaluate this derivative at negative 5. So substituting in x equals negative 5, we need to find f of negative 5 multiplied by g prime of negative 5 and add that to g of negative 5 multiplied by f prime of negative 5. And in order to evaluate all of these pieces, we're going to utilize the graph. So first we need to determine the value of f of negative 5. In other words, when x is negative 5 on this graph, what's the y value or the output on function f of x? So utilizing the graph, you can see that f of negative 5 is equal to 4. So f of negative 5 is equal to 4. Now we need to multiply that by the derivative of g at negative 5. So the derivative is going to be the slope of the tangent line to the curve at negative 5. So if we go to negative 5 on function g, we're down here, but we don't want the y value, we want the slope of the curve here. And since this is a linear piece, we can simply count and go, in this case, up 2 and write 1, and you can see again up 2 and write 1. So the slope here is positive 2. Therefore, the derivative at negative 5 will be positive 2. So we're going to multiply 4 times 2 for the first part of this product rule. Then we've got to add that to g of negative 5. So back to our graph, g of negative 5 is just the y value when x equals negative 5. So again, we're back down here, and you can see that our y value is negative 2. So g of negative 5 will be negative 2. And then we need to multiply that by f prime of negative 5, the derivative of f at negative 5, which again is the slope. So at negative 5, if we're on function f, we're up here. But again, we're interested in what the slope of the tangent line is. This is linear again, so we can just count. In this case, down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1. So we can see the slope is negative 1. So f prime of negative 5 is negative 1. And therefore, we have 8 plus 2 gives us a final answer of 10 for number 1. Now, for number 2, we have a different function, k of x, and it is defined as a quotient. So k of x is defined as f of x divided by g of x. And then once again, we're asked to find the derivative of k at 3. So since k is defined as a quotient, we need to use the quotient rule to determine the derivative of k. So let's start with that. k prime, the derivative of k, if we use the quotient rule, remember it's low d high, so it's the g of x function in the denominator, times the derivative of the numerator. We often say low d high, meaning low times the derivative of the high, or the numerator function, low d high minus high, the function in the numerator, d low, which is the derivative of the function in the denominator, all divided by the denominator squared. Remember some smart calculus teacher, which wasn't me, came up with that way of helping you to remember your quotient rule. Low d high minus high d low divided by low squared. So now we need to evaluate this derivative specifically at three. So we'll need to compute g of 3 multiplied by the derivative of f at 3 minus f of 3 times the derivative of g at 3 
all divided by g of 3 squared. Once again, we'll utilize the graph to find all of these values. So let's start with g of 3. g of 3 is just the function value at 3. So if we go to x equals 3 and we are on function g, that puts us right here. So g of 3 will be 1 multiplied by the derivative of f at 3. So that's the slope of the tangent line at 3. So again, if we go to f, and our graph is a little off here, but we're going to make an assumption uh, that we're looking for the slope of this line, and we're going to say that this line is almost perfectly through those coordinates, even though I know it's a little bit off. But it looks like we're going basically up one, right one, up one, and right one. So therefore, the slope here at 3 appears to be positive 1. So we have 1 times 1 minus f of 3. So again, f of 3 is just the function value at 3, but we're on function f this time. So that puts us down here, and the function value, you can see the y value is negative 2 times the derivative of g at 3. So again, if we're looking at x equals 3, but we're on function g, then we need to find the slope here. And again, counting, we can either go down 1 and right 2, or up 1 and left 2. But either way, this is a slope of negative 1 half. Be careful with your signs there. If you miss a negative, that's going to totally mess up our computation. And then all divided by g of 3 squared. And we said earlier, we already knew what g of 3 was. g of 3 was 1. So that's going to be 1 squared. So it looks like we're going to end up with a 1 minus 1 all divided by 1. In other words, final answer here of 0.